Welcome to the Philips Intelliview Patient Monitoring Microlearnings. In this session, I will talk about measuring carbon dioxide, or CO2, with our patient monitors. Here we go. CO2 is a gas that is a result of cellular respiration. It needs to leave the body through the venous circulation and then into the alveoli of the lungs, using diffusion as gas exchange mechanism. Through breathing or ventilation, CO2 is then finally exhaled. That is a whole journey how CO2 is produced and how it finds its way out of the body. Any hindrance along this path can be detected via capnography in the capnogram and the entitled CO2 value. Monitoring CO2 closes the loop with monitoring SpO2, which is maybe a more common parameter in monitoring vital signs. Whereas SpO2 measures the oxygenation status of a patient, CO2 reflects primarily the ventilation status, but also the metabolic and circulatory state of a patient. As a concrete example, hypoventilation or an apnea will be detected immediately with capnography, while with SpO2 you'll get a delayed detection. And if your patient receives ventilatory support, Capnography can also help in assessing the technical aspects of the ventilation support. For example, if there is a blockage in the endotracheal tube. Capnography has its place in many clinical areas. Here are some examples, but there are many more. Use capnography to confirm a tracheal tube placement. Monitor the effectiveness of chest compressions during CPR. Monitor CO2 waveforms during transport to assure the integrity of airway and ventilation. Monitor the efficiency of mechanical ventilatory support. Monitor CO2 in anesthesia to immediately detect unexpected changes in the respiration when a patient is sedated during a procedure. Let us now take a closer look at capnograms, or CO2 waveforms. They are the visualization of the exhaled and inhaled concentration of CO2 during the respiratory cycle. In a normal capnogram, you distinguish a baseline, an expiratory upstroke, an expiratory plateau, the end tidal value and the inspiration phase. Another source to obtain clinical information from is the numerical value of the end tidal CO2, the ETCO2. Normal end tidal CO2 values are usually in healthy adults at rest between 30 and 43 millimolar mercury or 4.0 to 5.7 kPa. Studies show overall a moderately strong correlation between end tidal CO2 and the arterial partial pressure of CO2. But dead space ventilation and shunt perfusion diminishes that association. This means with healthy lungs and normal airway conditions, end tidal CO2 provides a reasonable estimate of arterial CO2. With diseased or injured lungs, there is an increased difference between the partial pressure of arterial CO2 and the end tidal CO2 due to a ventilation perfusion mismatch. In the IntelliView patient monitors family, there are two methods for measuring CO2 in the patient's airway, mainstream and sidestream. The mainstream measurement uses a CO2 sensor attached to an airway adapter directly inserted into the patient's breathing system. 
The side stream measurement takes a sample of respiratory gas with a constant sample flow from the patient's airway and analyzes it with a remote CO2 sensor built into the measurement system. For both measurements, the measurement principle is infrared transmission. Infrared waves fall on a photodetector. The more CO2 present in the respiratory gas, the more infrared rays are absorbed. The monitor uses the information from the detector to display the capnography. When choosing mainstream and when sidestream. Mainstream provides a real-time accurate capnogram that doesn't require sample removal from the breathing circuit. It's a good choice for intubated adult pediatric and neonatal patients. When using a high humidity ventilator circuit, monitor mainstream CO2, if that is available, in preference to side stream. You do need to zero the sensor each time you use a new airway adapter. The sensor puts additional weight on the tube and increases the anatomic dead space. Always keep the windows of the adapter in a vertical position. This will keep water and patient secretions from pooling onto the window. Philips provides two mainstream solutions, the Capnostat from Philips Respironics and the Irma from Massimo. If you use Sidestream, then Philips provides the following three technologies. Low flow from Philips Respironics, ISA from Massimo, and MicroStream from Medtronic. All three solutions are fit for intubated and non-intubated patients. It can be used for adult, pediatric and neonatal patients in almost any patient position. There is a minimal delay in the waveform and readout because it takes time for the gas sample to travel to the sensor. Therefore, the readings may be a bit different due to the variables involved with pulling the gas sample from the patient into the monitor and into the internal sensor. Secretions can be aspirated into the sample line. This could cause the line to occlude and require user intervention to correct the situation. There are many options when selecting an appropriate cannula for non-intubated patients. Think for example about combining the CO2 measurement with administering oxygen or using an oral nasal cannula for a patient prone to mouth breathing. Check if your monitor has the following connector to use mainstream capnostat or sidestream low flow from Philips Respironics. In both cases, when connecting the sensor cable onto the connector, you need to wait two minutes for the sensor to reach its operating temperature. And you must zero the sensor on your monitor, exposing the sensor to room air before you can start monitoring. Read the instructions for use of your IntelliView patient monitor for the whole procedure and contact your local Philips representative for further clinical advice and support in choosing the best supplies. To monitor CO2 with Masimo, you need a CO2 module. The module serves for measuring mainstream CO2 with the IRMA measurement device and a single patient use airway adapter and it also serves for measuring side stream with the ISA measurement device and the Massimo single patient use NOMO line tubing. Before you can start using mainstream IRMA, you need to zero the measurement device connected onto the airway adapter. For side stream CO2 with ISA, you can start monitoring directly within 10 seconds. Read the instructions for use of your IntelliView patient monitor for the whole procedure and contact your local Masimo representative for clinical advice and support in choosing the best supplies. To monitor side stream CO2 with micro stream from Medtronic, you need the following lure connector on your patient monitor. 
MicroStream is suited for both intubated and non-intubated patients. Use respectively an airway adapter or a MicroStream filter line. The calibration is performed automatically at the startup. Read the instructions for use of your IntelliView patient monitor for the whole procedure and contact your local Philips representative for further clinical advice and support in choosing the best supplies. Now it is time that you discover how the CO2 measurement is presented on the IntelliView patient monitor. Here you see the waveform. This is the end-tidal CO2 numeric. You may also see the high and low alarm limits displayed. This little numeric is the IM CO2. It displays the smallest CO2 value measured during inspiration. You can set a high alarm limit for this parameter. And here you see airway respiration rate that is calculated from the CO2 waveform. For the AWRR, you can also set a high and low alarm limit and an apnea time delay. For some CO2 technologies, you need to perform a manual calibration. In the Setup CO2 menu, select Start Zero Cal to initiate. When you are using Sidestream technology that has automatic zero calibration, you can prevent an automatic zero calibration from being started in the next five minutes. Select the Setup CO2 menu, then select No Zero for 5 minutes, or select the Suppress CO2 Zero Smart Key if configured. This is useful, for example, when performing an important procedure that requires uninterrupted CO2 monitoring, like during an intubation. You can also switch off the pump for 15 minutes, and therefore the measurement. Use this when you are administering a nebulizing therapy or during suctioning. You can always resume the measurement before the 15 minutes are due. If you want to learn more about capnography in our Delaview patient monitors, contact your local Philips representative, read the instructions for use document, and there are capnography application notes. Well, that's it for now. Check out our other microlearning videos too. Thank you for watching.